So good morning, everybody. It is Sunday morning, um, a little bit earlier London time than usual, and this is Turning Towards Life, week number 53. I wonder how far we'll go before we keep saying what the week number is. Um, we had the delight of celebrating a year of doing this last week. And um, this week, Lizzie and I are here just a little bit earlier because in the world of third space this week, our professional coaching course is in full swing and I'm involved in teaching that this morning so in half an hour I will be zipping from where I am across to the um, beautiful venue by the River Thames that we've started to use and um, doing the fifth day of our second session of the program so I'm feeling um, unreasonably excited and joyful about that we have a beautiful group that we're working with and um, lots of stuff is happening and of course, I think I say this every week because it's always true. I'm really pleased to be here. I'm really pleased to be with you, Lizzie, and that we get to do this and read something that you've written this week too. Mm. Yeah, hello and good morning, everybody. I've had a really beautiful week actually this weekend. Um, one of the highlights has been meeting some people who watch on Sunday mornings with us and or afterwards, and you know who you are. And I've been very, very blessed to feel the... The gift of that and one of the gifts was that a very wonderful woman came up just before so we did our we've mentioned this a few times but sue our lovely third space colleague and i did our introduction to our programs program um, on monday and tuesday this week and one of the greetings that i got was somebody who is actually on our year-long program but but i had never met before but she listens to turning towards life and the first thing she said to me was like hello lizzie i love you already <laughs> and i was like Oh, so that's where I'm going to teach from, feeling loved already. And it's been such a gift for people to know me before I know them and to just already feel care and love for me in, in whatever position I'm in, in terms of holding this work. So I'm really grateful for all of that. And thank you, everybody, for your generosity of when you meet me, how you are with me and how you take care of me. And it's very beautiful. And I hope to meet lots more of you at some point who are um, involved in this project so um i guess maybe i should say a little bit of background of, of how come i wrote this so this morning we're just about to embark in my family on a on a workshop on something called non-violent communication which you can look up on the internet and there's a person called marshall rosenberg who wrote all this wonderful stuff about how to communicate with compassion and connection and in preparation for the workshop, I've been working with a few reflection questions that our wonderful friend uh, Jean, Jean Philippe from Montreal has given us. And he's teaching us today, and he's also a leader of the, our year long programme, but in Canada and in Paris actually this, this week. And so it kind of set me on this inquiry of what it really means to be undefended and how to be in conversation with the people closest to me with acknowledgement of the patterns that come out of my in my communication and my defenses and the ways that I try to protect myself when I'm feeling really really vulnerable and so I suddenly was like oh what does it even mean to be undefended and to sit there and actually Justin I when I wrote this I was also thinking of our lovely colleague and friend Nina because I think in the scheme of things I think Nina's one of the least defended people in the face of feedback that I've ever met and I watch her and actually she might be listening now. I watch her and I always feel like how on earth does she open into this so beautifully? And she's such an example for me when I was writing this as well. I, she, I had her energy really with me of, of when she's opening and opening into what's true and what's true and what's true, even if it's somebody else's experience and even if it's critical of her, she's interested in it rather than defending is how I feel her. So. I wanted to to just mention that because I feel like it helps me to have examples of things when I'm writing and to feel into people's world so that I can learn more. So I'm going to read this and then and then Justin, you'll read it. Is that cool? That's what we're going to do. Okay. <clears throat> so undefended. When someone tells you that you fell short, that you did not reach the standard, that how you're behaving or how you're being is not working for them. What you did was wrong 
and criticism comes and hits you right in the heart where it hurts. The defense system rises up to protect. All the responses that push away come to the surface and turn into language and action. All the things that could be said to attack back. A route worked out to escape and hide, deny and avoid, attack and divert. Also, I don't have to feel the feelings of inadequacy, failure, deficiency, half-bakedness, and face my own self-criticism, self-hatred, self-disappointment. Better to direct it outwards rather than inwards. This is an invitation to experiment with undefendedness, an in-the-moment invitation to breathe and find space, to let the criticism wash over us like the wind passes through trees. We see it and feel it, but allow it to pass and give ourselves the opportunity to really hear the person in front of us and take it all seriously without defending or attacking back. And we gently open to what might be being brought to us as if it was a gift. We open to finding the small spaces in between the happening, the reaction and the response so that maybe, just maybe, we don't have to believe our story of deficiency that gets poked by others' criticism and we can stand undefended, unapologetic, responsible and guiltless, admitting to our humanity and imperfection without collapsing, fighting or blaming. And here it, it is that I can accept what's in front of me, welcome it even, however badly wrapped, and receive the gift of becoming more open, more vulnerable, more undefended and more loving to myself and others in words and in action. Wow, it's quite something hearing you read that, Lizzie. Mm. <clears throat> Before I read it back, I'm so appreciating your um, the way you're able to tell the truth so clearly and so generously. Mm. You do that so often in speaking and and in writing. So it's um, quite something and I'd like to read it so that everyone hears it from a different angle and so that you get to hear it too, Lizzie. Yes, please. Um, undefended. When someone tells you that you fell short, that you did not reach the standard, that how you are behaving or who you are being is not working for them when what you did was wrong, when criticism comes and hits you right in the heart where it hurts most, the defense system rises up to protect. All the responses that push away come to the surface and turn into language and action. All the things that could be said to attack back, a route worked out to escape and hide, deny and avoid, attack and divert. Also, I don't have to feel the feelings of inadequacy, failure, deficiency, half bakeness and face my own self-criticism, self-hatred, self-disappointment. Better to direct it outwards rather than inwards. This is an invitation to experiment with undefendedness as an in-the-moment invitation to breathe and find space, to let the criticism wash over us like the wind that passes through trees. We see it and feel it, but allow it to pass and give ourselves the opportunity to really hear the person in front of us and take it all seriously without defending or attacking back. And we gently open to what might be being brought to us as if it were a gift. We open to finding the small spaces in between the happening, the reaction and the response so that maybe, just maybe, we don't have to believe our story of deficiency that gets poked by others' criticism. And we can stand undefended, unapologetic, responsible and guiltless, admitting to our humanity and imperfection without collapsing, fighting or blaming. And here it is that I can accept what's in front of me, welcome it even, however badly wrapped, and receive the gift of becoming more open more vulnerable, more undefended, and more loving to myself and others in words and in action. Mm. That's quite a thing to read, Lizzie. It's quite a thing to hear. Um, yeah. My goodness. It's really interesting. Because <laughs> I'm listening to you, I'm really listening to you, and 
finding myself kind of really moved by the description of all the ways I fall short and all the ways that I don't do so badly at this too, mm. but that there's a description of the moment which I'm trying to cultivate in my life all the time, which is I'm, I'm reactive for sure. You know, when someone criticizes me or says something mean or, you know, it can be, why didn't you put the cup in the sink that, that way or something? Or why did you leave that pan dirty? Or, you know, it can be really small. And I'm really working on how do I be with that and do the thing like let it be here and stay here because it would be so easy for me to find some and, and I do this often one of my my defenses is that I jump to someone else's wrong bits when they point out my wrong bits as a way of defending myself and kind of equalizing the situation because it's less um, intolerable to me if we're both defunct so I tend to find a way of saying well actually you did this last week or something and I'm finding that I fail all the time and I've also got like a, a way of just writing this in the first place and also practicing with myself. But I'm really feeling called to deepening this being undefended thing. And I guess I'm being called by the world as well because what I've seen in the last couple of weeks in our media and the happenings of the world is that people aren't generally willing to stay with what someone's saying and just have it be true for them without discrediting them without ridiculing them without pushing back and I think that's a quality that the world really really needs in all of us is to be present receptive and to not attack back because we feel hurt and to not deflect but to be accountable and and if there is any part of our doing that has someone else's suffering come about to be able to listen to that genuinely and for us to have a deep enough sense of our true identity that we can tolerate someone else's truth implicating us and then be implicated and either say sorry or explain with compassion or do something that's contactful rather than attacking, blaming, defending, judging, all those things. And I really feel that it's possible. There's something in my life right now that I'm going, this is possible. I can feel it. And how do we dedicate ourselves more deeply to the practice of being present to letting something be here and not doing the normal personality patterns? And I guess the first step is watching what our patterns are so that we can see what we do to then open up the point that we might choose not to do the thing we do once we know what it is that we do. Mm. And I can feel that so strongly. And you reading this to me is like really exciting for me because I can, I can really feel the possibility of it. And I can really feel what a whole different life that is to be open and undefended and a real receiver of what's here and whatever anybody else's pain is and whatever anybody else's judgment on me is and to work with it rather than just push it away all the time and pretend that it's like that's what how you deal with things like that yeah well it's very inspiring for me to hear you talk about it in all of those ways and i'm so with you and as as you were talking <clears throat> i'm thinking about loads of things so one is one is this point that you make very beautifully in what you've written that that part of the path here is the the big work we have to do to get onto the inevitable and beautiful incompleteness of human beings mm -hmm. ourselves to start with and not have that be a way of letting ourselves off the hook which is another defensive move which is I know I can do this, which is to blow another person off by going, well, you know, of course, what did you expect? I'm just an imperfect human being, which is basically a version of go away. Yes. You yeah. know? Because that's not really that it, the, um, the shame patterns that we have. It's another version of the shame pattern, which is to go, I get that I'm incomplete and it's basically mm -hmm. shameful. And what did you expect? But to, to, um, 
to meet ourselves. There's this lovely line from Derek Walcott's poem, Love After Love, about meeting ourselves at the threshold, to be able to meet ourselves and see ourselves in the mirror, lovingly and truthfully, mm. so that we can, you, you say this um, towards the end of what you've written, because it's what allows us to respond, to be responsible, mm. is when we can be truthful and loving at the same time, that we don't come from truthful and shaming as the, as the start. And I, I guess we're also used to being, to feeling ashamed and to being shamed by others. Yeah. That we've got a lot of undoing to do and it starts, it starts early no matter how loving the people around us were because when we're small and somebody uh, criticizes or won't welcome a part of us, I think to feel shame in the midst of the enormity of it is very ordinary. And you're talking about, a, um, I think, a deep kind of loving adulthood, the development of a deep kind of loving adulthood, which is to get onto our own shame and also to feel it. You know, I think one of the things that's helped me a lot, um, and I know I, I defend in so many ways, I can feel myself bracing often, I have a, such a deep mm. a body sense of what it is for somebody to come, particularly when I've been trying my best, you know, with my best good heartedness and I've mm. fallen short either actually or in someone else's experience. And I can feel that. I can feel that brace. It, it's been really, really helpful to include being ashamed as one of the things that's just okay to happen, even though I don't like it. And so when I, when I let somebody else down and they tell me, I feel ashamed every time. And the, the, that defense that I can do, which is so I don't feel ashamed, push mm. it away. Mm. I think what I'm reaching for is that the extent to which we push any part of it away is the extent to which we end up defending. If I defend against my shame, I also can't be contactful with you because I'm disregarding the truth of what happens. And if I can feel and make contact with my own shame and be real about it, I can also be present with you and there's the possibility that something more loving can come in and then I can listen and what you have to say can come in through I love this you know through the gaps between the leaves mm. Mm. so I have to tell you that um Nina who you mentioned before and I'm so with you that this is what she's like I don't know if I've ever told you this story Lizzie but the first time I met Nina that the moment I met Nina was on a course years and years ago which was big time um, having people practice feedback with one another, which is such um, a <laughs> red hot field. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I really want to be here and this is terribly scary. And she was the first person who came up to me on this course and said, can I give you some feedback? And I remember so vividly something that my body still does, which is this huge freeze, like, <laughs> Mm -hmm. okay if you're gonna have to give me some feedback let me just freeze and if I freeze enough I won't have to feel what it is that you say and then she said something really generous and kind and beautiful and warm and lovely and it was totally not what I was expecting it knocked me sideways that someone would do that the reason I'm saying that partly so we have Nina with us in our conversation is the the bracing the certainty that what's coming is going to be un not survivable. Mm -hmm. How quickly, so my move is to, <clears throat> if I'm not onto it, is to tense and to want the whatever's happening to bounce off so I don't feel it. Even when somebody, you know, they go, somebody was coming to say something really sweet and true. So last thing that's occurring to me with this is, it seems to me that your invitation is something like if we can allow ourselves to feel it all and have our, ourselves be in contact with the bodily experience, whatever it is, there's a sort of magical way that our bodies, if we'll allow them, can soften and transmute the, the strong something that we're feeling so that we can then have the chance of being available again. And every time it's into the bodily experience or with the bodily experience and not bouncing off it, mm -hmm which is what I was already braced, you know, and I just know how to do really well, is have the kind of body that things will bounce off mm -hmm. so that nobody will see my hurt and I won't feel it too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really 
feel affected by the word available that you just used. Because I think in our patterns, our availableness and our contactfulness is basically absent. And one thing that JP said to me yesterday, who's teaching us this nonviolent communication today, he was doing a little kind of, we were having dinner and he said, I said, you know, can you just say a couple of things about what we're going to be doing tomorrow? And he said, he said it really beautifully. He said, you know, we all have values like respect and maybe contactfulness and dignity and very often with the people closest to us in difficult situations or even ordinary domestic ones as we all know those values go out the window and you find yourself standing there without your values intact in the way that you're speaking or acting towards the people that you care about most and then there's this kind of chasm between who you want to be and who you actually are right now and how do we look at that and see how we can bring our values in in the moments that really matter actually being having values with people that you care about is really important or you know your values and so often they kind of fly out the window and so this being available thing feels like a really big opportunity and one thing that i can see in this moment is that if i was able if i am able to say how i'm doing or even use language that's not coming from my defense pattern in the moment i.e. I'm feeling really inadequate right now. What you just said had me feel like a complete idiot. It's really different than, and, and, and in that I could say, and that's because I'm feeling ashamed and whatever. But in order to be able to say that I have to be available and in relationship somehow. So my defenses take me out of that opportunity to actually be in that genuine place of speaking to my experience responsibly and saying this is how I'm doing this is how I'm feeling in this moment and it's occurring to me that there's so much more chance of the person who's having who's saying something to you being available back to you and them not being also triggered if we might be available in that moment in that way so I feel like this kind of whole world is opening up that's turning turning into something different than like a ping pong match, <laughs> but yeah. more like a, oh, you just hit the ball over to me. I'm just going to hold the ball for a while and look at you in the eyes rather than look at the ball and bat it straight back again. But that, there's a, that there could be a pause between things and we can reach for something truer actually in the relationship that that we could maybe start to trust one another to be able to talk to us and be with us in our vulnerability rather than to keep defending. And it's just rising in me as well. Sometimes I get told that I do this thing where I say, look, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best here. And I'm feeling the defensiveness in that, which is leave me alone. This is as good as I can do. And you telling me it's not good enough. It's like hitting me deep somewhere that's like, this is already hard and I'm trying and please go away. And I haven't really seen that very well before of just how defensive that is. Cause I kind of, I kind of know I'm protecting myself. I know I'm, I'm putting a boundary up actually. I'm saying this is too much for me. Can, can you stop doing that now? Because actually I'm really vulnerable, but saying I'm doing my best isn't saying I'm really vulnerable. I'm trying to put up a boundary. <laughs> It's a little bit, it's, it's, a, it's a version of um, conversation over, Yeah. in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Or at least part of the conversation that's over. And I, I'm struck by, um, my version of that is to go, is to um, uh, be, be fine. Mm. I'm fine. You're telling me this thing that's really hurting me and I feel really ashamed about. Mm. And I'm fine. Mm. Which is another leave me alone line. And I'm... I'm um, I'm so struck and touched by this angle that you're bringing in that is actually very closely connected to what we were talking about last week about truth telling mm -hmm. is truth telling which is yeah. when you when you when we tell the truth about our experience now not 
something else, what's right here, and the truth of my own, what's happening, and that's why I think the body is such a great place to start, because it's yeah. un unarguable truth. Wow, I'm really, I'm feeling really shaken by what you said. Yeah. I'm feeling really tender or ashamed. That's the, that's the path into truthfulness with ourselves and truthfulness with the other person. And what I notice about it is, is that is not about the, the thing that we're talking about. Like, like yesterday, I inadvertently really let somebody down by making a promise that I couldn't keep because of the constraints of this course that we were running. I promised something to someone who was coming in to visit us and to help us with something. And when she came, I was unavailable and unaware that I, because we were teaching and doing coaching dinners and stuff and um oh, i felt so much about it and that it seems to me that the all of my wishes to go well it, you know it wasn't really my fault or it's not as bad as it was or you know or just to hide away in i'm such an awful person they're all all of the paths back into relationship start with gosh i feel really mm. distressed or, uh, yeah, so, so that, I think what I'm reaching for here is, is that, that first place that you're talking about uh, of realness and truthfulness about what's here, mm. that's not even about the thing, whatever it is, is what might give us the chance to be real enough and contactful enough with, with one another that we can talk about the whatever else it is that's important to talk about. And every other move we make, the um, I'm doing my best move that you talked about, mm. is, is, a, is a turn away. Yeah. Yeah. And what a uh, gift it is when we find out little bit by little bit that we do have the capacity to turn towards to borrow a phrase that might have something to do with this project we're doing. Um, you know, that I can, oh, I can stay and I can say I'm, I'm feeling really ashamed now. Yeah. yeah. It's so generous and it's a kind of real kindness to ourselves as well to be able to say that. And also, it's occurring to me that as we, as we begin this work, to be undefended and to look at our patterns we might also be able to see other people's patterns more clearly and do whatever we can to notice that and to be compassionate towards that in our relationships with one another. So if I know that you freeze and I can tell that, I might be able to open up communication with you at that point that puts down my criticism of the tea that you made me and ask how you're doing. Like we can do that for each other as well. And I think we can just start with ourselves and it only takes one to change a dynamic. But I think it's, it's, a, it's a way of being responsible in the world to be attuned to other people and to, to extend what we're doing with ourselves into the relationship with other people. Yeah. Well, you've done that. You do that with me, Lizzie. That's one of the great gifts that you've been teaching me over a while, a way in which I freeze and give up my goodness very quickly in the face of... Mm -hmm. Uh, someone not being happy with what I've done and I know that your knowing that about me has shifted deeply shifted what I can hear from you mm. because you know that and so you you're playing your part with me you know I have to play my own part in being available in the way that you're talking about but you can play that part with me mm. when you say something to me you'll know something about what's what might be going on and that changes our conversation too so that's the the other side of this i want to just say this before we end um that i really appreciate that in in saying it that way you're bringing in that this is not just down to those of us who are going to hear from the people we love and care about all the ways that we've you know haven't met what they need it's also part of those of us who want to bring the ways in which we haven't been met to one another to know the people that we're bringing it to and be sensitive enough mm -hmm. to them that we can we can meet them and be real with them in the tenderness of it as we go yeah. we're undoing like you said at the start we're undoing the potential violence in all of these yeah yes situations exactly so this has been so beautiful i am um, i know we've got to go i know i have to go and start yeah. the sunday morning of the professional coaching course down the road so thank you so much 
Thank you. And thank you everybody for being here with us. It's so beautiful to know that you're all there and we're here and it's actually a wonder. We will see you next week. We will indeed. Bye-bye, everyone.